I'm back. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that was for, but basically this is just a preemptive video to, to show you that I am back and I'm going to be editing my trip there. I'm going to be telling you about some stuff you can do at the card stores in Japan. So how to sell your cards, how to buy cards, the Ori Pass there. I'm going to show you more. I'm going to show you the location of some of the card stores. Not all because there's way too many. And like I mentioned, I'll be mentioning during the vlog, I was afflicted with a issue while I was there in which my inner thigh, so let's say this is your legs, on my left leg, the inner thigh here, a lump grew. So that made me unable to walk or made it very painful for me to walk. So that's the reason why there were a few stores and a few regions in Tokyo Bay that I couldn't go to. So unfortunately, yeah, and like two, three days before I returned, I felt I got better. So yeah, it didn't really leave me much time to do, do anything. And that's, that's unfortunate, man. You know, what can you do? Sometimes life gives you lemons and uh, you can't even make lemonade because you don't have the you don't have the grinder, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's about it. I had some. I did buy some stuff back. I went to some Oripas. I I wasted some money there. Do as I say, not as I do. I really highly recommend, especially if you you are able to walk a lot. Just go to all the card stores, look for the cards, ask them, open a picture, show it to them. Uh, Arimaska or like do you have this then they'll kind of understand and then if you want it graded then you ask uh, PSA 10 then they should understand generally they will understand PSA and uh, as for what I got that was interesting I got this little gem so this is a promo I'm not sure where it's from but it was from a store that's very very isolated and the condition is pretty good and it's only 1480 yen so it's around $13 this is one of my favorite finds this time I bought Lana PSA 10 SAR and uh, Cynthia SAR from the uh, what's that Sun and Moon era Ultra Prism and uh, I don't have it on me right now, but yeah, I got some of the uh, SARs from the Oripa, and I pulled some decent stuff, put Kimono Lady and all that. I mean, you will see once I once I edit it. I'm just here to tell you that I'm back. We are gonna be playing more games. Elden Ring, complete maybe, Wuthering Waves. I played a bit of Zenless Zone Zero and yeah, I mean, if you want me to make a video about that, then comment down below, but otherwise, I'm just back. Oh, 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 one more thing. You can expect tutorials on how to play Gundam Arsenal Base. So what's that? Basically, it's a Pokemon Mezastar, but Gundam. The reason why Japanese people don't play computer games is because they have stuff like this. These are cards that you obtain from playing the Gundam Arsenal base. This is the peak rarity, P. Oh wait, that might be what it stands for. I was quite confused in I was making the videos. P. What does P stand for? I don't know. Parallel, because there's actually a normal version of this. But yeah, it plays a bit like Castle Fight and uh, if you played Warcraft 3. If not, it's a combination of Auto Chess or TFT for League of Legends players combined with the original game. So you have two lanes and a core, Ancient, and you deploy up to five mobile suits or five units and you have a cost in which you deploy these units. So let's say I do a combination like this. You can see the mobile suit has a cost of three and this pilot has a cost of four. So this set combination, when I deploy them, will cost seven. And you generate resources 
at the same rate as your opponent. There's uh, lots of layers to it, but unfortunately, I can't read Japanese. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. And then you can see the types also, like the pilots here. You can see, let's say, let's say Chang Wu Fei. See over here, it's red. Red means they attack anything. Blue means they attack. They attack only targets, so they will focus on the uh, opponent's towers and the ancient. They wouldn't care about any other mobile suits or anything. Green are defense, defensive, so they don't really move forward. They just stay near your base and they defend it from attackers. And there's a scissors, paper, stone kind of triangle. Although it's uh, pretty one-sided. So generally the red ones are the strongest. They are not weak to anything, but uh, they also don't specialize in anything. So they don't, they are not objective based. Whereas the green defensive ones are objective based and the blue is objective based. There are purple ones, but I've yet to see one, unfortunately. And also if you pair with, if you pair the pilots and the mobile suits respectively like that, you get a bonus. At the back, you can see these are the details and uh, the link ability activates when you get the pair. So technically, you could put any pilot in any mobile suit and then it will still function. But depending on the scenario, you could forsake the link bonus. Like if you want a mobile suit to behave a certain way, then you change the pilot. So this Astray Gold frame was supposed to be a defensive uh, defensive Gundam because the original pilot is defensive, this guy. However, if I pair him with Troa Barton from Gundam Wing, he's blue. So this makes this Gundam, which is a heavy artillery unit, offensive. He goes straight for the opponent's uh, towers and he deals massive damage. So in certain scenarios like that, it's quite interesting how you can like mix and match the units there. There's also Dragon Ball, but that's uh, I have a video for that, but I much prefer Gundam because this game is a lot more interesting. But yeah, I think that's about it for the updates. Sadly, a lot of my plans were impacted and uh, I was unable to, to do everything that I wanted to do. But you know what? We'll be going there again. I don't know when. End of year. And I'm also planning because initially I wanted to go to upper Japan, up to Aomori, but if I go there in December and January, it's gonna be it's gonna be cold and I don't know about that. Cause I was thinking about it and like, you know, what if if I drive halfway and then it starts freezing up and I'm like stuck and I don't know anything, I don't know what to do and I'm traveling alone. That would be crazy. And that'll be a story, I guess, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then eh. And, uh, oh, right. I went to this, I went to Sugamo because I wanted to go check out the place, some of the locations around Japan and within Tokyo. And uh, I went to this temple, which had the Kanon statue. So Kuan Yin for anyone who is Chinese and uh, the Goddess of Mercy, basically. The Thousand Hand Canon, I don't know if you see in Japan a lot, but yeah, there was this nice lady who was like, looking at me and then it's like, oh, pray? You know, pray? And I'm like, okay, sure. Then she taught me how to pray, says, follow me, do as I do. I mean, her English was actually pretty good. I don't know how, but yeah, so I just went to like do the thing. And out of respect, because they didn't allow cameras, so I did not film that part, but that was just a little nice thing that I encountered that was quite memorable. Not bad, not bad. Would go again. <laughs> and the food there, oh my god, impeccable! I mean, I am also a foodie, so I do reviews, but let's see if we can find it. But otherwise, yeah, I like. If it weren't for this, if it weren't for my illness, man, god damn it, god damn it! Ah. All right, bye for, bye for real. I'll see you all next time. And I'm gonna go edit stuff. <laughs>